What's going on everyone? Back with another episode of Boot or Blue Screen, where we troubleshoot and fix PCs. This one actually came from a huge contributor of the channel, Min. And this is a test bench that I had previously tested and it worked just fine. But he said that when he took it back home, it was not functioning. So I told him I would absolutely take a look at it and maybe make a video out of it, maybe not, because it's just this one thing. The reason why we use these older test benches, I do the same thing. If we have a bad video card or a bad component that goes in and wrecks the board, it's not really that big of a deal to replace it. Whereas if you have a newer test bench, and I mean testing as in like we're just testing to make sure the card boots up, we'll, we'll do like some like fire strike or something on it, but nothing crazy. And that's what that's for. We're gonna take a look at that. But before we do that, he also dropped off this insane deal, which is a iBuyPower system with a 13700K and unfortunately only an eight gigabyte 3060, I'm pretty sure. We'll take a look at that soon. But I noticed right after he dropped it off, um, this is what actually made me think of making the video. This system has some really odd behavior and I'm gonna show you guys that in just a minute. So before you guys say anything about him just grabbing a computer without testing it, he did ask for some videos and stuff like that to see if it was running and obviously the guy had reset the pc so you can't really show any benchmarks or anything at that point stick around for the second half of this video to see if this actually functions i did notice that there's a third stick of ram in here which come on man that's a no-no um yeah so we'll take a look at this in the second half of the video let's start with the 3060 system so normally during testing you kind of want to plug stuff in very minimally, but I'm gonna plug this in like I'm a normal user, just gonna, just about to use the machine because this is what people will do the first time, you know, plug in their USB, plug in their keyboard, etc. And we're gonna just power it up. And I'm gonna show you guys what happens. Flick on the switch and voila, voila. Little boot delay there. See the keyboard came right on. Now pay attention to the screen and you're gonna see a bunch of lines on that screen and that's not a good sign. It actually doesn't mean that it's bad and I'll get into that in a minute. As you can see right there, Windows is going in just fine. And we get to the startup screen. Eventually. Actually, this is a little bit worse than last time. It completely started over. Now we have an MSI logo. And we are at the yeah. startup screen. So a little unusual, a little bit different than the first time I booted it up, but. So the night before I actually booted this up too, and I sent this to Min, I said, did you see this? And he said he didn't boot it up. I kept getting this screen and I unplugged the GPU and plugged it back in two or three times and it still didn't change anything. So usually artifacting like this is a bad thing. Usually it means that the GPU has an issue, but we don't have any drivers installed because Windows is still freshly installed. Like you're, there's no drivers, nothing is installed. Whoever owned this before completely wiped it out. So we do want to install some drivers and get past the installation. Um, we're also gonna, we will check this card on a different computer and we'll swap cards in here to make sure, you know, like it's only doing it on one card. So um, actually let's start with that. So we're gonna actually swap out um, this card for a AMD card and see what happens upon boot. So we actually picked up these uh, RX 6800s for really a really good deal. We're gonna be using one of these because the 13700K is still a pretty sick CPU. So I think we can get a lot better performance by having a better card like this one. So I haven't actually examined these cards yet and that one is quite dirty and this one is very clean. So we're gonna use the clean one because the clean one is much better. Uh, I'll never forget that thing that Bitwit said, by the way, when you spin this, it looks like something terrible. And just like I had mentioned, this is the RTX 30 68 gigabyte. Kind of sad. Don't hate me, AMD fans, but I find this kind of funny. Right after NVIDIA pulled the USB-C off their 20 series, uh, Radeon put a USB-C on this so you only have actually three outputs. You have the two display ports, one HDMI and a USB-C. All right, time to see what happens when we turn it on. Now again, we're gonna be looking for artifacting on the screen. And sure enough, it seems to have started without any of that artifacting, which is a little concerning for this guy. So we're in the BIOS, it looks all good. Also no artifacting, so we're gonna 
test this guy on this little test bench right here. This is the 3068 gigabyte again and see what it does. Should get a pretty quick post screen. And we have no artifacting. That's interesting. So I'm finding one thing pretty interesting about this card. Everything looks really blurry and strange. As you can see here too, the installer keeps failing. Um, if you look down here at the F in the fur mark, you'll notice there's like some kind of weird pixel shift happening. It's very blurry for 1080p. I'm gonna be using display driver uninstaller really quick and we'll be right back. So it appears doing the DDU allowed me to get past that error. So now we're loading up the driver. While we're waiting for the driver to install, let's actually see what kind of power supply they gave us. They're almost never good, but I do see a bunch of cables back here. Um, I don't see any extra eight pins, unfortunately. So we'll probably change this out for a thousand watt. We got a lot of these thousand watt power supplies for really cheap. Believe it or not, these were like 50 bucks each. Grabbed a bunch of them a while back. So we'll probably throw one of those guys in there, but just in case, let's see what we got. All right, so we got a high power 600 watt, which is seemingly what they always put in these. I keep seeing these over and over again. Let's take this out. We'll use it for something else in the future. It's not a terrible power supply, not a great one either, but we'll take it out and put in the other one. They did a pretty nice job at cable managing, I'm not gonna lie. Uh, that being said, it's really not all that complicated, so. Look at this Molex connector. I've actually never seen one like this. It's almost like they're trying to modernize it and hide it or something, but it is a Molex connector. It just looks different. I just want to mention that that just finished. So this entire time we've been installing a power supply, it took for this NVIDIA uh, driver to install. I don't know why it took so long, but we're gonna load up some Furmark now. We're just gonna run the 1080p Pro or 1080p benchmark. Um, ignore this strange screen cutoff. This is the Apple screen, it's completely normal. Uh, let's see what happens. I've noticed that this card is taking a little bit of time, oddly, to get to do normal things. It's taking longer than it should. I don't know what that's about, but so due to the screen's weird behavior, I had to drop the resolution down, but it doesn't really matter. It still got through the benchmark. Um, there is some strange oddity with this card. I can't really explain it. Kind of feels like when you're opening apps and stuff, there's a bit of slowdown. And I've run every single card before on this bench and I don't see that same slowdown. It's only this card. So I'm gonna give it to my friend. My friend actually wanted the card for something else. So I'm just gonna mention to him, hopefully it's something that's, I don't know, driver related that we can fix. All right, so we put the 3060 back in, powers up. I'm gonna see if it does anything similar. We swap the power supply just so we can put the faster card in, but just curious to see what happens if we just plug it back in and Give it a shot. That's interesting. So the artifacting went away pretty much right when we put the card in after we swapped the power supply. So that's pretty interesting. This power supply gets changed out and all of a sudden the strange artifacting goes away. Now, it did work on the other system, but just for the heck of it, let's throw it on the power supply tester and see what it does. All right, got the power supply tester on, and I, I'm i gonna guess that there's nothing wrong with this. Running through, CPU, PCIe. Yeah, everything's pretty normal. Everything is staying within margin. This is like turning it back off and turning it back on. Yeah, I don't know, guys. Very strange. I think the last thing we can do for this PC is update the BIOS. So I'm not gonna lie, I was a little bit worried because some of these boards that come in these pre-builds are custom made from the manufacturer for the pre-built. But luckily they do have a page. Make sure you do put the V2 if you have this particular setup because there is a V1 that has HDMI and a few other things on board. So we're gonna download this BIOS and update it. So if my dad happens to see this, we were actually running into an issue with his X870 platform, also MSI. Uh, this is what you see when you're about to flash the BIOS. It should come up right away. And as you can see here, we have the BIOS, the newest, latest BIOS right here. So we're gonna click on this. And do you wanna select this file? Yes. And the BIOS is updating. This will take a little bit of time. And yeah, we'll be right back in just a minute. Check that out. What the heck is that? <laughs> 
Bye, Steam. So what do you think is wrong with this computer, Kitty? So, uh, upon thinking, I guess you would say, this computer probably had no problem. If I was to guess, the card need to be pulled out a few times or the, the BIOS might have maybe need to be reset or something like that. Plugging the AMD card in may have changed something in the BIOS just a little bit. Man, she's so curious. Um, but yeah, let's check out this broken board over here. Let's put this not functioning board on the test bench here and see if we can figure out what's going on with it. So he was saying it basically wasn't posting or turning on, I'm not sure. He didn't give me the exact information on it, but uh, we're gonna just do it just like this. No card, only the HDMI going into the board. So far, no picture out. This board unfortunately doesn't have any code readout on it, so we're just gonna remove this memory stick. I don't remember this being in here when I gave it to him. Also, Min, why would you put in one stick and not another if you're gonna do this? And they're mismatched. All right, so we're gonna pull out this one stick. Watch it be that. And... Okay, powered it back on. That's odd, there's actually no image. Now, I 100% know when I gave this back to him, it was working because I had sent him a picture of the kind of crappy card, or sorry, crappy CPU that was in it. I think it's something like a 7400 or something not too good, uh, but it didn't really matter because we were just using it to test stuff anyways. But as you can see, it really doesn't seem to be working. So the next step is to take out both these dims. Um, actually, we can try one dim first, just to see what it does. And if not, I have a working dim that I know works 100% that we'll put in there. But as of right now, come on light, there we go. So that didn't seem to work. Let's try to pop in, sorry, I'm trying to do this and film at the same time. Pop in this ballistics stick here, which I do know works and try it again. Got a picture, so it seems like maybe there's something up with the memory. So it's possible that one of these sticks is bad, or even both, but we'll try to put them back in. I'm actually gonna mix one of the sticks in here with this good, uh, well-known working stick, just to see what'll happen. And if that works, then we'll put the other one back in and see what happens. All right, so I tried the two blue sticks here, or one, in this second slot over here, the B2 and B4. And for some reason it's not working in those two slots. So what I'm gonna do now is basically check the socket to see if there's any bent pins or anything, cause this should work just fine. I just wanna say that paste looks pretty rough. I didn't take this cooler off when I was uh, testing it at first. It just worked, so I left everything the way it was, but that looks terrible. Also these brackets are a little bit annoying cause they will come past it, but as you can see, they get kind of stuck a little bit. And you can hear a lot of weird cracking in that socket, so my guess is something funny's going on in there. Very carefully move it. Probably should have wiped the CPU before I took it out. But the socket looks good. Yeah, there's definitely no problems with the socket, so let's just clean up the CPU and pop it back in. So we have the sort of dreaded i5-7500. And I just want to show you, I left a little bit of this paste on here. There was a ton of really hard paste around the edge. This could have actually caused it to slightly move every time someone put that cooler back on. And so maybe that's it. I'm, I'm gonna go with that. That's probably what the issue is, but let's put this back in and test it out. We should clean this too. I forgot to clean that. Let me clean it real quick. Sorry, guy. Like when you're using a camera and trying to do this stuff, you do everything backwards that you would do the other way in normal life. <laughs> All right, so now it's all clean. Let's put the cooler back on. Also, you can see right here how crusty this is. It's really old and hard. So definitely gonna put some fresh paste on. Let's just do a nice, nice little pea blob. That's right. I would say it's a good rule of thumb that just about every time you take a cooler off to expect to redo the paste. The cooler was a lot more fun to take off than it was to put on. All right, and even mount the fan. We're just gonna go for Go for the test. And I also put it in, I put the RAM in that slot in question that wasn't working. Seems 
seems to be starting up and there you go got a picture perfect let's put the two sticks of blue ram back in and see what happens what you up to kitty all right got the two blue sticks back in hopefully we get a post so for whatever reason, I cannot get this board to post with those blue sticks of RAM anymore at all. But unfortunately, I don't have a million years to keep troubleshooting this board, which is this one here. So um, I did put the sticks that are questionable in this known working setup. So we're gonna see what happens if we try to boot this right now. And if we don't get an image out of it, we'll know there's something wrong. I got a feeling that, <laughs> I got a feeling these sticks are probably fine, but It's actually taking a little bit longer than I thought. And you can see it's actually stuck. It's jumping between the CPU and the DRAM light. And we still don't have a picture. So let me try Let me try to do one stick real quick. Yeah, that seems to be the actual bad stick. Now let me throw in the other one just to not be insane. A lot of people don't like when I do this freehand thing, but it's really tough to show the screen boot process and what's happening on the LED over here at the same time. So doing the freehand thing, I got a feeling that both these sticks of RAM are bad. So I just wanted to show you that the original sticks of RAM are back in on my test bed and we got a post. So, all right, we're back with the other board. Got the fan on, got my memory in there. We're gonna try this, hopefully it works. That's actually a good sign that it turned off because it's gonna go into training the memory. And it should be eight gigs. Hopefully he's okay with that. I'm gonna give him this kit if I can get it to post. So this is what I'm gonna give him and we're gonna jump back to the other PC now. So we're pretty much at the highest settings here and we have FSR on the 2.1. Feels pretty good. This display is really not good for gaming, to be honest. This is an old Apple cinema display. So there's like a lot of issues with a bunch of things. So I gotta, gotta work on getting something else. I, I liked it for a little bit, but um, it looks cool. It's just, it's not good at the gaming stuff, but pretty fun to see how these older cards uh, fare, you know? The 6800, I actually have another one here. So I got the other 6800 here. So if you guys wanna see me do some tests on that down the line, let me know, cause um, I'm actually pretty interested to see how it holds up. So we did get this working. The nice thing is that even though we didn't get to use the better RAM, we still have some RAM that he can use. Um, so you're welcome, Min. He's always looking me up, so. Uh, obviously we got a better build. There was nothing really wrong with this, I don't think. I think something got corrupted in the BIOS or whatever. Putting in this card and resetting it just fixed it, so. Uh, probably could sell this for about 160 US. So that'll that'll make this $400 PC a really, really good value. Um, I think he paid about 180 for the video card, so not too bad. Um, yeah, that's gonna do it for this video. Nothing crazy. Obviously the fixes were insane. I think just, uh, I don't know how these two sticks of memory went bad. Something could have got shorted when he was, he put a third stick of memory in, maybe he didn't wait for it to be completely off and I don't know, who knows what happened. Anyways guys, let me know what you think down in the comments. Um, let me know if you want more of these videos like this. I'm kind of like getting more and more bad stuff coming in lately. It's kind of annoying, but also great for content. Also, I do want to check this out. Maybe I'll throw it in my own personal rig and use it for a little while. 6800, not a bad old card. Let me know what you guys think. Till next time, peace.